What I'm going to show you now is an example of, um, it's called a pH indicator. It measures how much acid or base is in a solution. And so you run into acids and bases. I like to talk about food when it comes to chemistry because I like to eat. And um, something like lemonade would be really acidic or like soda would be really acidic. Whereas something like milk would be um, on the opposite end of the acid base scale, it would be a little bit on the basic side. So what we're gonna do now, and I'm handling a base here, so I wanna protect my eyes because um, base is not good for eyeballs. So um, I'm gonna add the acid and base and we'll see what happens. So it's possible to make this turn back and forth like an infinite number of times practically. Um, these kind of things are really useful to determine how much acid or base is in something. But one of the things I like to do is watch the way that the flow happens in a container like this. That's really fun. Yeah. Um, I remember you said the two little things that were in there. Wasn't that something when you something red or red that changed based on the position of things? Did those two substances, I don't know what they are, but the base and the acid, did they change the position? It changes the color? Or what changes the color? Okay, good question. So um, this is a a compound or a chemical called methyl red, which is a, a part of a family of compounds. So lots of them that will change color depending on whether acid or base is added to it, to them. And so it's really useful if you want to know if something is acidic or basic. You can use different members of this kind of class of compounds to um, to measure if it's an acid or basic solution. So what's happening is. Um, the molecule is actually changing the way that it's um, it's changing the way that um, it's arranged because it has um, it has groups on it that will um, either give off or take on acid. So if it gives up acid, it turns a certain color, and if it takes on acid, it turns a certain color. Um, and so it's just a matter of um, sort of the property of the chemical itself. So you can do this kind of thing yourself at home. If you take um, purple cabbage juice, just uh, grind up purple cabbage and let the juice come out. And then you can squeeze like lemon juice onto it and it'll turn different colors. The thing about purple cabbage juice is it doesn't just have two colors, it has like eight colors to it. So it'll change different colors up and down the pH scale. And um, some cooks know this and they'll They'll, um, they'll take like some purple cabbage leaves and lay it out on the plate. And some of them, they'll sprinkle some 
some lemon juice or something like that on it. So you have different colors of uh, leaves. It just makes it sort of pretty. It's just sort of an artistic thing. Good question. Uh, the faster it spins, it should make it faster. The reason it was slower was all based on how fast I was adding it. Um, so yeah, mixing it faster does cause the reaction to happen and the dispersion to happen faster. So your instinct is right about that. Yes. This water is just whatever came out of the tap tap over there. But it would be useful to have some hot water for the next demonstration. Is there some way I can get some hot water, this on the trout? Is there some way I can get some hot water um, in this? Okay. Yeah. Um, I've seen that before. Because I have fish, isn't that like just like testing the pH for the fish? Like exactly. It's exactly like testing the pH for fish. Yeah. So pH is really important. For example, in an aquarium, the, uh, the pH or the amount of acid and base has to be just right for um, the organisms that live. And the same is true for people. Like the pH of your blood has to be right around 7.2, 7.3. And if you have ever um, breathed really fast like this, <laughs> like that, and your head starts getting a little weird, it's because the pH of your blood is changing. So it really does um, come into play in life this sort of, this sort of um, pH measurement. Okay. So, yeah. Floating around here? It's undissolved, it's undissolved methyl red, which is a, a pH indicator. Yeah. Um, it will eventually dissolve, it just doesn't like to go into solution very much. Uh, in order to, to make this fast, what, what chemists do is they'll take this and dissolve it into alcohol, and it dissolves very quickly into alcohol. Then they take the alcohol solution, just add a few drops, and it goes in. So um, it's just a matter of the property of the material, it just takes a while. Like if you were to come back tomorrow, this would all be dissolved and it would be really dark. Yeah. Um, it's just a property of the chemical itself. Um, the, but a, a, a deeper explanation as to why it's yellow is because, um, you know, in the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum, there's like blue, yellow, and red. What's happening is this is absorbing the blue and red light that's in the room, and yellow is passing through it, so the only thing that we see is the yellow. It's the same reason that like a leaf is green, it absorbs everything else but the green light, and so that's why we see it as green. Yeah. Well, it's green to us, but it's, the reason it's green is because it's absorbing all the other light. So it's really green. Now, why was it turning yellow earlier when it started with because it started out in its, um, see, it has to be either in the acidic or basic form. So when it came in that bottle, it was in one of the one of the forms. Let's see which one it was. Sorry. Okay, so it was this one, and this this is the acidic form. So it was it was in the um, it was in the acidic form when it came in the bottle. Yeah, it has to be one or the other. Yeah. Okay. Um, because this is a true solution, it, you should be able to see that that same thing that we saw with the colloidal solution. So in this case. Uh, What's happening is yeah. What's happening is the white light that's coming out of here has all the different colors in it. 
and um, the solution is absorbing um, all the colors except red. So um, when the light shines through it, it's able. It, it um, only red is allowed to pass through. So it's going through the colloidal solution now. You had a question. The white thing? The white thing is a, a metal magnet. It's, it's made of metal inside, so it has to be Superman to break that. <laughs> but if you did, what you'd end up with is two smaller magnets. Um, and if you put two magnets into something like this, they sort of fly around and compete for, for the magnetic field uh, of the magnetic stirrer. So it kind of makes this crazy, um, crazy dance of magnetic um, stirring bars. Yeah. Uh, what if you mix a pure substance with a non-pure substance and then you shine a white through it, what would happen? You mean if you mix these two? Yeah. Uh, what would happen? Let's find out. I'll tell you what, we'll do it like this. I'll shine the light on anybody's face. Beam in here, at least I can. Can you see the yeah. light beam now? Yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of bubbles at the top that are just spinning. But it's still. Question. You wouldn't see anything because the green light would be absorbed. And do you know what you said about the, PA, uh, the pH in your blood earlier? Um, does that mean you would be able to kill someone with lemon juice or something? <laughs> if you injected them with yeah. lemon juice? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You can, you can change someone's blood pH by injecting the wrong thing and it will kill them. That's happened before by mistake. <laughs> They would be like two small magnets. Magnets are fun to play with. Yeah. <coughs> if we put this in the sun, near the sun, um, well, at first it wouldn't change, but over time the sunlight would break the um, break the compound down and it would become clear. Light will damage this particular methyl red. Um, sunlight will damage a lot of things. And so many products when they're made, um, people put um, things in it that will cause it to um, resist light damage. Because light is really strong. I mean, it'll uh, you know give you a sunburn and it'll change other things too. Yeah. Actually, this one kind of makes a good fl flow within the container, so um, it wouldn't necessarily make the mixing better, but sometimes I use two because if I have something in there, like for example in this case, where, where there's, a, there's a solid object in there, there's undissolved um, 
methyl red in there. If you use two, they bump into each other a lot. And sometimes that particle will get caught in between, it'll kind of smash up the particle. So sometimes I use two in order to smash up stuff in the solution. Well, um, it's still moving a little bit, but I can show you what will happen. You can actually see the, you can actually see where the, in this case, where the acid is going. Kind of like, this happens a lot, like if you put, um, a little bit of food dye or something like that at home into water, just put it gently on the top. You can see it sort of mix down through there like that. Yeah. Didn't have a magnetic stirrer. Sorry, I, didn't, I can't quite hear you. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. This is a little bit basic. I will basically want to get it just on the other side. Turn the stirrer off. And put some dry ice in there because I want to demonstrate something to you, and that is that. 